get a little bit more on the markets. For that, Diana Ag Avigdor is joining us. She's a portfolio manager and head of trading at Barometer Capital Management. Uh, Diana, good to always be able to catch up with you and get your thoughts on the markets. Right. I know prior to 1.36 p.m. today with news on China and tariffs, you were already busy needing to get back to the desk. Um, right. Why has it been so busy? What are you seeing? It's been very busy. It's earnings season and uh, volumes in the last couple of days have gotten uh, much better. <clears throat> and lately we've been seeing a lot of flow uh, come in, uh, you know, it feels a little grabby. It feels a little like uh, people need to get invested. Um, everybody's waited for a bit of a pullback. We haven't had a 1% down day since October. Um, so it's been a, quite a big run. And you and I have spoken about this before, exposures across all the different players in the market, asset managers, hedge funds, uh, quantitative uh, players. Um, they're all been underweight equities. Uh, flows have been going out of equities and into bonds in a big way in 2019. With the exception of the last couple of months of the year, flows have turned positive. And uh, while everybody was expecting January to maybe have a little bit of a pullback, plus we've had some geopolitical items that would have taken us down um, or, or people might have thought would have taken us down and they did not. So it feels a little grabby as people need to lay up exposure mm -hmm. and, um, and it's busy. Mm -hmm. Earnings, um, we've had a couple of major bank earnings and we're having a lot of uh, um, sector moves. You, you, you spoke about the Canadian market, a lot, of, um, a lot of different things in the Canadian market are moving like consumer, um, ESG related names um, and so forth. So hmm. lots of lots of hot spots. L lots lots to talk about there. Um, let me just first get your take on on the U.S. bank earnings. Clearly, they seem to be really quite strong. Did that did that surprise you? And or with with respect to the capital markets divisions uh, coming in much better than anybody anticipated. Is that just easy year over year comparisons, or are you sensing something else? There's that too, and and frankly, it's a bit of sigh of relief. Markets have a way of discounting future uh, future items, earnings, economics, and so forth. Uh, market in 2019 has rallied quite strongly in the financials. Uh, when the Fed, um, to, to your words, uh, got our back, uh, the financials in the last quarter have really caught up uh, with the rest of, of the sectors. Um, so if the market's pricing in future uh, items, it was very good to see that the market was not wrong or it wasn't mispriced. So the earnings, um, the beat, and the fact that it looked okay, and it, you know, JP Morgan, which is one of the the largest bank in the U.S., on their conference call talked about the health of the consumer, which being the biggest bank in the U.S. and consumer being three quarters of the GDP, uh, with unemployment where it is and earnings moving up a little bit, and the Fed having your back, it's great to get that kind of temperature on the U.S. consumer. So, um, so, so that was fantastic, and uh, Citigroup as well reported, and that that was up four percent on earnings and and revenue so um, yes it's a sigh of relief and um, confidence that it can keep on going as we feel that there's a bit of a Goldilocks situation here hmm. which you don't get very often maybe once every decade or two right um, Diana I'm, I'm curious though from a money flow perspective uh, what sectors and let's start with the US and we'll bring it back home here to Canada but what sectors are you actually seeing real money flow into or is it pretty much broad-based because people just need exposure and a lot of people just buy ETFs these days even though uh, it's really been a, a stock specific market and if you've chosen well you've done very well it's very true. You're very true. It was a stock picker's market in many, many ways. So flow-wise, if we were to aggregate flows um, and compare them um, over 12 months and three months, um, you can see that if you look at flows over the past 12 months, you'll see flows have actually gone into, um, of those that came into equities, because not much has come into equities to begin with, but of those flows that came in, went into um, um, defensive tilt, utilities, um, staples, consumer staples, and so forth. And uh, money flew, money came out of things like financials, especially in the beginning of the year when the Fed was not quite having our back um, and, and was actually on the path of raising rates, uh, Q4, 18, and early 19. But if you look at the last three months flows, that's totally reversed. Um, we've seen uh, flows into the financials uh, substantially in and out of the utilities, so the risk on uh, flavor. Mm -hmm. And where it has remained very stable, it has been um, the technology sector 
And uh, that's a testament to the fact that the technology sector is so, um, such a big sector with so many variations underneath that title. You can have a cyclical technology, a small cap, a large cap, uh, um, uh, 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 defensive technology stock. So right. there's so many different software, hardware, DRAM, um, wireless. Diana, not, we're, so. we're given the fact that the market's run and, and you have had exposure. I think over the past number of years, though, you've always had a bit of a barbell approach. Um, but in terms of our viewers today who maybe haven't had enough exposure, perhaps, um, where would you be putting new money to work today, both in Canada as well as the United States? You know, you really have to look at what it is that you're investing for. And the reason we've had a barbell approach is because people um, that are older need income. And the bond market is not providing the typical kind of return that, say, a, a person on a fixed uh, fixed income like a pension um, can get. You, you can't live on less than 2% uh, return a year. And that's why people have been moving up the equity curve and when you do that at the expense of bonds for somebody who's, you know, say, retired, um, you must choose equities that provide a decent amount of uh, dividend and dividend growth. And, and then, therefore, you have this barbell approach. So to clients or to, to people looking to invest right now, like I said, we're in a very great Goldilocks um, environment where economy is great, unemployment is great, but we don't have high rates, there's no inflation. Um, and the Fed has your back. You want to look at, and, and bond market's not giving you the return you need. You need to look and barbell your portfolio where you have a, most of your equity uh, uh, exposure into stocks that give you uh, some kind of return on which to live on and, and that you can actually uh, accumulate. And then on the flip side, a little bit of risk, a little bit of risk appetite, because there's a lot of great companies that have fantastic growth like Lulu, uh, Lululemon and uh, Ballard Power and this whole uh, this whole climate uh, clean climate uh, uh, concept. So the barbell I think works for most of the older population and for the younger traders there is plenty of volatility to trade. Mm. And um, just from a, a few more kind of ideas here in Canada, names that you like, um, where would you be looking at? So um, you know Canada. Uh, our exposure to Canada is about 40% of the portfolios, 60s in the U.S., and we've discussed this before. It's a little more diversified, for especially if you want technology. But for Canada, we really um, have uh, picked um, the specific names. We do have some of the REITs um, that you know we like for their dividend and, and return and, and type of uh, safe type of uh, um, return for clients. But we do own things like Lululemon and uh, Ballard Power, and uh, so, uh, th those okay. are two examples, for example. Dan, I just want to pick up on one item that you said, because over the past couple of days, um, I've been watching the REITs, and they haven't been performing as well. What's going on? Well, that's what, it, it's what happens when risk on, risk off type of uh, appetite, money flows out. Um, you know, anytime there is money flowing out of a sector, um, you know, you're going to have some pressure. There's lots of other things like financials, Canadian financials are doing very well today. Anything that, um, you know, you, you, you want to move up the risk curve when you feel that the market is in an open yeah. space. They've also run up so much. Um, you know, if, if, you know, you have a stock like Ballard Power up 15%, um, you know, you're going to have some flows coming out of the safety. And, you know, factor trading, this is, you know, we don't talk about this a lot, but, but it, it does characterize the stock markets these days. Um, because you can lay on exposure on and off very quickly, factors become um, very uh, prominent in thinking about how um, markets get impacted. And program trading does impact this. So, for example, just to simplify, if the factor is risk, or growth at the expense of safety and utility, then you're going to have a program yeah. uh, move flows around, and they these programs tend to be price insensitive. I'm talking, I'm putting on my trading hat right now, so but but it impacts the prices, um, mm -hmm. and and the factor trading um, is is different. It's not single stock. It's not. It doesn't it doesn't reflect on the 
the, on the fundamentals. On, on the fundamentals yeah. of this dog, but it does impact the whole sector like a like a wave. Right. Okay, Diana, we'll leave it there. Great to catch up with you. Thank you. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. That is uh, Diana Avigdor, Portfolio Manager and Head of Trading at Barometer Capital Management.